What to include with wedding invitations? Wedding invitations is one of the most important decisions that a bride and groom need to make when planning their wedding. Wedding invitations are often the first contact made between the bride and groom and their guests. This makes it important to make sure that all of the necessary items are included. The first consideration is obviously the wedding invitations themselves. These should include the day, date, time and location of the wedding. It should also include the names of the bride and groom and the names of whoever is hosting the wedding if different than the bride and groom. If there is a reception following the ceremony then this location should be included as well. The wedding invitations should match the overall tone and color scheme of the wedding. This will alert the guests as to what to expect at the wedding whether it's a formal or casual affair. It's imperative to include reply cards within the envelope. This is just as important as the wedding invitations. This card will need to have spaces that the guest can use to fill in their name whether or not they're attending the wedding and the number of people who will be attending in their party. These reply cards should have a self-addressed stamped envelope included for the guests to return. These reply cards are imperative to include with the wedding invitations. Wedding invitations should also include information for out-of-town guests who will need to make travel arrangements for the wedding. The bride and groom should make sure to book a block of rooms at a local hotel. The hotel will likely give a discount. This information should then be included with the wedding invitations so that guests can take advantage of the lower rate as well as book their trip in advance. The wedding invitations may need to include information about the reception if it's at a different location than the ceremony or at a later time. This would include the location of the reception, time and directions to the reception site. This does not need to be anything as fancy as the wedding invitations but is necessary for guests to have this information prior to the wedding. There are special extras that can be included with wedding invitations in order to make them more elegant and appealing. This includes the traditional piece of tissue paper overlay on top of the wedding invitations or other embellishments. These additional touches will complete the look of the invitations and envelopes. Wedding invitations are a lot of fun to choose. It's at this time that many brides and grooms really feel connected and reality of the wedding sets in. It becomes truly exciting. What happens during your wedding reception? Normally a wedding reception lasts for between 3 to 5 hours. To make the most of it, it's best to plan it. It's good to know in advance what you expect to happen and when you expect it to happen. The first hour. Wedding pictures are taken. Even if pictures were taken before the wedding ceremony it's good to allocate some time for taking pictures at the beginning of the wedding reception. Music should be always present during the reception and it should be started as soon as the first guests arrive. The receiving line should be in place to greet the arriving guests. Some of the most fitting songs for the introduction of the wedding party are All You Need Is Love by The Beatles and At Last by Etta James. The second hour. By this time there should be mood setting music both the bride and groom and all the guests should have arrived. During the second hour the guests should view the bride and groom's first dance. Then the father and daughters and mother and groom's dance should follow. The third hour. By this time your hungry guests will welcome the announcement of the serving of the dinner. Usually the wedding party is seated and served first. Then food is served to the rest of the guests. During the dinner the best man proposes the first toast. The fourth or final hours. The tossing of the bride's bouquet is a popular activity for the later part of the wedding reception that is followed by the groom throwing the garter. The last dance is followed by the bride and groom's getaway. By the end of a successful reception you should have a lot of happy and full wedding guests. Use the above timeline to prepare your wedding reception with your wedding planner and your vendors. Want to get married in an Elvis wedding chapel? Thinking of going to Las Vegas, getting married in an Elvis wedding chapel and having an Elvis impersonator sing at your wedding. A Elvis chapel is one such wedding chapel. At a Elvis chapel, you can have your own cool Elvis wedding ceremony. There are several exciting Elvis wedding packages to choose from. For example, 
The Love Me Tender package includes an Elvis impersonator singing three songs of your choice, special Elvis vows, a copy of Elvis and Priscilla's marriage certificate, two pairs of Elvis sunglasses, a six-rose handheld bouquet, a personal wedding coordinator, complimentary limousine, 12 photos during your ceremony and six posed photos after the ceremony, you keep the roll of film, and a videotape of the ceremony. Weddings are booked one hour apart instead of the standard 15 minutes, which means no waiting in line, delays or double bookings. Their ministers conduct beautiful and personal ceremonies however you're welcome to write your own vows as long as they're approved one week before your ceremony. You can take your own photos and videos during the ceremony. Brides and grooms are welcome to view the chapel via appointment prior to booking their wedding there to make sure it's the right choice. What makes for the perfect dating formula? People whose marriages unravel most often are filled with sadness and bitterness and find it hard to ever trust or love anyone again. Though these negative feelings may linger for quite a while it's important for the sake of your happiness that you make an effort to put these emotions aside and when you're ready to go out and start living again and dating again. You need to believe that you're capable of falling in love and being loved ones again. Dating can be the best way to find your ideal life partner. Before jumping into the dating scene make sure to ask yourself what your needs are and what qualities that in your new partner. Just read on to learn about the dos and the don'ts of successful dating. Being positive and honest makes for the perfect dating formula. Don't try to hide your past relationships. Instead be open to your date about your past experiences and partners. If your date is mature and sensitive enough he she will understand and empathize with you. Don't exaggerate about yourself or past experiences. Remember a relationship that's based on dishonesty is bound to fail. Share with your date your expectations for the new relationship and try to understand to what the expectations of your data. On the basis of your experience try to judge whether the new man or woman in your life has anything in common with your ex. If there seems to be quite a few similar traits that make you feel uncomfortable then it may be a good idea to call off the relationship before it gets too serious. Things to keep in mind while dating. There is no rule restricting you to date just one person in the beginning. Try and date actively and even get to know different people through dating services so that you can better understand what type of partner can best provide you with a loving relationship. Dating does not call for any commitment right away. It's only a process that helps you find the right partner that you're willing to commit your love to. Proceed one step at a time to build a long-lasting and enduring love and relationship with your new partner. Being too hesitant or too impatient when dating will not help you find the right partner for you. Don't get emotionally involved right from the very beginning and don't reveal too much at an early stage. Take time to judge for yourself whether you truly have fallen in love with the person or whether it's just an infatuation. Any relationship between a man and a woman is complex and unpredictable yet exciting otherwise life would be so lonely and meaningless. Dating just helps to make the process easier and more natural to find the right person for you. What makes a baby boomer? By now you probably know that the baby boomer generation includes all those people who were born between the years of 1946 through 1964. And you probably know that the baby boomer generation is quite large encompassing some 78 million individuals. But what you might not fully understand is how the baby boomer generation got its name. The term baby boom corresponds to what was happening back during the early days of the baby boomer generation. Among other things, the end of World War II in 1945 brought with it the return to their homeland of one hundreds of one thousands of young men and women. In the United States it was a time of world domination and economic prosperity. It was also a time of soaring marriage rates and urban sprawl and young couples weren't wasting any time starting families. Population explosion. If you were young healthy and female during 1945 and 1946 there was a good chance you were pregnant too. It was during 1946 that the birth rate exploded to levels never before reached. In the years that followed birth rates continued to soar. It was this explosion of new births that would later become known as the baby boom which is what gave rise to the term that is so prevalent in our society today. Although the timeline of births extends beyond what normally would be classified as a generation those born between the baby boomer generation years of 1946 and 1964 without a doubt have much in common. 
they were brought up in the years after the Depression and the victory in World War II brought about a time of optimism. The baby boomer generation was the first generation to grow up with television and advertising and a newfound sense of equitability. To those born during the baby boom it seemed almost a goal to break all of the rules that had restricted their parents and their grandparents, and break those rules they did. Growing up during the baby boomer years meant growing up with rock and roll and massive marketing. It was a time to question authority and experiment with drugs and sex. The early baby boomer years were as unique back then as they are right now. A generation of fulfillment. No other generation in history has so forcefully refused to grow old. And as the first of the baby boomer generation nears retirement age that they've much to look forward to. Rather than being something to fear today's baby boomer lifestyle is one to be embraced. Baby boomers are living longer and they're working as hard as they play. They're traveling, dating, expanding their knowledge and staying active. They're committed to doing whatever it takes to maximize every single moment of life that they have left. Moreover than the years of their birth, their drive, their determination and their absolute love of life are what makes a baby boomer. If you were lucky enough to be born during the baby boom go ahead and wear the baby boomer label with pride. Baby boomer issues, health, money and retirement. As the baby boomer generation continues to grow older, their primary concerns have shifted to their health, money and retirement. The days of idly wondering where their next vacation should be and whether their bonus check will be as much as they deserve are quietly passing. Today baby boomer issues are mostly about concerns with maintaining their dwindling health and having enough money to live comfortably through their twilight years. Health concerns for baby boomers. As people grow older they often experience problems with their health. Their bodies grow more fragile and susceptible to diseases and bacteria. In addition many people 50 years of age and older are reporting health problems that were not experienced by people in their same age group long ago. This problem is exacerbated by rising health care costs. As the boomer generation begins to require more medical care the cost of that medical care continues to increase. Health issues and their ability to cope with them and find the proper medical support is a major concern for baby boomers. Money and retirement concerns for baby boomers. Along with rising health care costs, baby boomers also worry about money and retirement. During the last several years of their careers before retiring, people usually enjoy salaries and bonuses that are larger than at any other point in their career. As a result money is rarely a major concern. However many people fail to save that money. Instead, they spend it on vacations their families in in the pursuit of living fun and fulfilling lives. This can lead to a rude awakening when they retire. Because they've not saved much money during their career a lot of people discover that they don't have enough money to live comfortably during their retirement years. When they retire they no longer earn a salary. They no longer receive bonus checks. Instead they're foreseed to live off the income that can be generated by the investments they've made throughout their lives. Unfortunately, many have not invested any money that can generate this income. Other baby boomer issues complicate this money problem. People live longer lives today. When a baby boomer retires, he can expect to live many years in retirement. In the past a 65-year-old man could expect to live approximately 10 years in retirement before passing away. The financial requirements of living comfortably for these 10 years were manageable for most people. Today financial planners use a life expectancy of 90 to 95 years. That's when a person retires at 65 years of age he can expect to live up to 30 years in retirement. With dwindling health, rising health care costs and a lack of savings to generate a fixed income the financial requirements of living 30 years in retirement are out of reach for many people. These health, money and retirement concerns will grow as more of the baby boomer generation moves into retirement. Some will choose to work part-time jobs to keep active, stay healthy and generate supplemental income. Others will require the aid of family and friends. Still others may require more help than is available to them. As the baby boomer issues are beginning to emerge the boomers will experience the issues that have been quietly gaining momentum for years, their health, money and retirement concerns will continue to grow. Baby boomer health. Baby boomer health is a big issue for today's seniors. Fortunately the focus isn't so much on which of the many ailments people will be stricken with and how soon. 
With all of the advances that have been made in the field of medical science people are living longer and they're spending their later years healthier too. That's why much of the talk about baby boomer health revolves around keeping mentally and physically fit. Perhaps that's because the one thing that has set the baby boomer generation apart since its beginning has been the focus on the self. As this generation grows older past behaviors that may have been considered selfish or self-indulgent are being replaced with behavior that's focused on self-preservation. And that's a truly beneficial change especially when you consider the impact that this generation has had on trends. Which senior health issues matter most? With a lifetime of focusing on the self, today's baby boomers place much emphasis on maintaining a youthful appearance. Fortunately they're smart enough to understand that looking and feeling good are totally within their control. That may even explain why so many older people have finally started replacing their bad habits with good ones such as regular exercise and a healthy diet. Eating right and exercising can help the body perform optimally and perhaps even more importantly, it may help reduce or eliminate the need for costly prescription medication. Another baby boomer health issue that has grown enormously popular is anti-aging. Baby boomers realize that they cannot stop the clock from ticking but they're also not willing to sit back and do nothing about it either. That quest for eternal youth is what's fueling the market for new products that promise to stop or reverse the effects of aging. Baby boomers are buying up nutritional supplements, creams, lotions, ointments, elixirs, spa treatments and more almost as fast as these products come to market. It's a billion dollar industry that shows no signs of slowing. Baby boomers know too that many of their worn out body parts can be replaced but unfortunately the costs of replacement surgery is high. Interestingly figuring out how they're going to afford to pay for all of the surgeries the prescription medications and the anti-aging products that they've been led to believe they need is another of the big baby boomer health issues seniors are facing. It's easy to lose track of the fact that the quest for eternal youth and longevity is coming at a very high cost for many. What's the answer? While science and technology can do a lot to enhance baby boomer health there's a lot you can do without having to resort to such extreme and expensive measures. For example you can reap tremendous rewards just by making the right choices when it comes to diet and exercise. But even protecting yourself against the sun's damaging rays quitting smoking and reducing stress can take years off your appearance. So don't wait any longer. Start taking better care of yourself today. Baby boomer retirement options. As the first wave of baby boomers nears retirement age they're beginning to realize that unlike their predecessors, they have many options. Here's a look at some of the baby boomer retirement options this group of mature adults are choosing. They're working long past retirement age. The generations that came before the baby boomers retired from the workforce at either age 62 or 65 or sometimes 67. They got their pensions and their social security checks and before long they sold their homes and moved in with their adult children where they stayed until their passing. But not today's baby boomers. It's almost like collectively they're saying, what me retire? Instead of closing up shop they're choosing to remain in the workforce working part-time and sometimes full-time sometimes out of necessity but more often they're continuing with work that they enjoy. For this group the baby boomer retirement option they're choosing is to postpone retirement they're volunteering. Another popular baby boomer retirement option is volunteering. They're making health a priority. Long gone are the days of 80-hour work weeks experimenting with mind-altering drugs overindulging on food, alcohol and nicotine and all those other bad habits that baby boomers are known for. For many baby boomer retirement is a time to make health a priority. Baby boomers are going to the gym, riding bikes, playing tennis and golf, swimming, dancing, hiking and canoeing. They're basically doing whatever they can and what they enjoy doing to keep their bodies moving. They're quitting bad habits and eating nutritious meals and many are living longer as a result. They're traveling more. The senior travel business is definitely booming as it tries to keep pace with another popular baby boomer retirement option. No longer feeling the need to plan for their children's futures, more baby boomers are of the opinion that you can't take it with you. They're talking about the money they've accrued during their work years and they're certainly having no trouble finding ways to spend it. They're visiting places they never before had a chance to see and they're returning to old favorites. Whether it's a weekend getaway or a two-month hiatus alone or with friends or loved ones, baby boomers are definitely enjoying their travels. 
they're going out with a bang. If there's one thing you can be certain of it's that the baby boomers definitely won't ride quietly into the sunset. Like every other thing they've done in their long lives they baby boomer retirement options they choose won't be mainstream. What's antisocial behavior? Antisocial behavior ASB is any activity that impacts on other people in a negative way. Antisocial behavior remains a serious issue in the UK with around 66,000 reports of ASB made to authorities each day source. One day count of antisocial behavior, September 10, 2003. What is ASB? Antisocial behavior includes a variety of behavior covering a whole complex of selfish and unacceptable activity that can blight the quality of community life. Examples include nuisance neighbors rowdy and nuisance behavior yobbish behavior and intimidating groups taking over public spaces vandalism, graffiti and fly posting people dealing and buying drugs on the street, people dumping rubbish and abandoning cars begging and antisocial drinking the misuse of fireworks. Antisocial behavior doesn't just make life unpleasant. It holds back the regeneration of disadvantaged areas and creates an environment where more serious crime can take hold. On any measure of polling or survey antisocial behavior matters it has a negative effect on far too many people's quality of life. The Antisocial Behavior Act applies only to England and Wales. There are similar but separate measures in 4C in Scotland and Northern Ireland. What is an ASBO? An antisocial behavior order ASBO prevents those people responsible from carrying out an antisocial act or series of antisocial behavior. ASBOs are designed to stop unacceptable and antisocial behavior and prevent members of the public being targeted further by such acts. The ASBO in theory prevents the person responsible from being present in specific areas in local communities known as exclusion zones. How are they imposed? ASBOs are imposed by magistrates' courts after an application by a case officer who is usually an employee of the local council. The case officer has to tell the court details such as the people and incidents involved and the restrictions of the proposed ASBO. The court will also hear about welfare issues, family circumstances attempts at mediation and warnings and evidence that the defendant has not been victimized or discriminated against. The court then decides what prohibitions to apply. An ASBO has to last for at least two years but can be indefinite. It must be reasonable and proportionate and realistically practical. ASBOs don't need to only refer to criminal acts but can prohibit actions which although not criminal themselves, would be necessary steps before a criminal act such as a ban on entering a shop rather than on shoplifting. Appeals against ASBOs can be made to a Crown Court. What happens when they're breached? Breaching an ASBO is a criminal offence, for which a defendant can be arrested. The police investigate breaches and can obtain information from any source including housing and other local authority offices, neighbours and members of the public. Usually breach of an ASBO will result in prosecution and a court appearance. Using parents to tackle ASB. A proposal to tackle antisocial behaviour by forcing more parents to attend parenting classes are set to be published. The moves may even be extended to parents whose children have been responsible for antisocial behavior rather than crimes. An alternative to such orders would be to do nothing about such families, with a future cost to society including thousands of pounds in court and social care fees. Critics of antisocial behavior. One theory is that antisocial behavior in some children could be the result of their genetic makeup and hence giving them an ASBO is not fair or just as they just can't help it. Other critics of the ASBO system argue that it criminalizes behavior that's otherwise lawful. Other parties have voiced concerns about the open-ended nature of ASBO penalties that is there's little restriction on what a court may impose as the terms of the ASBO and little restriction on what can be designated as antisocial behavior. Many youths have been parading the ASBOs as a badge of honor within their own gangs and communities. What wedding DJs wish you knew about choosing one? Wedding couples are frustrated. DJs are frustrated. There's a disconnect here. But what exactly is the problem? It depends on who you ask. DJs continually wonder why brides and grooms treat the mobile DJ the type who lugs around his equipment to show up at big events and weddings as a commodity. In other words, couples price shop ruthlessly as if any given DJ were interchangeable with the rest. 
Paul Arnott, http colon slash slash www.mybigdade.co.uk, a Yorkshire DJ and NADJ National Association of Disc Jockeys member who organizes the UK's mobile DJ show North Event, http colon slash slash www.djshownorth.co.uk puts the problem like this well your average couple spends hours deliberating over the dress. You handpick the caterers. You pour over flowers and sweat over the florist. You spend hours choosing just the right venue and church not to mention the time spent on favors. But then you go out and hire a DJ because he's $10 cheaper than the next one. Or he's a friend of your brother's or he does Tuesdays at the local bar. You might never even see him work check out his equipment or meet with him personally to make sure he's suitable. Most couples handle every other major item in their budget differently. You don't choose one venue over another because it costs $100 less. Few brides with a budget to work with buy their cakes from the discount grocery store even though that cake slathered in tubs of better cream frosting would be much cheaper than one from the designer bakery downtown. Instead, they investigate. They take pictures. They taste test amaretto fillings and hors d'oeuvre. And eventually, they settle on the vendor who seems poised to deliver the best experience to their guests. Why is it so different with DJs? Part of the answer is an image problem, says Paul. People perceive that most mobile DJs will turn up 15 minutes ahead of time with a couple of speakers and some cheesy circa 1970s light screens and play Agadu all night. For we lucky few who haven't heard it the 1984 song Agadu frequently charts as the worst song of all time. We all feel confident identifying an excellent meal or a sublime dessert. But few of us feel comfortable evaluating DJs in the same way. We know that a good one can get the party started but we're not sure how to tell a good one from a bad one. Some people think so poorly of DJs they prefer to eliminate them entirely soundtracking the dance portion of the night with the pods or laptops. This isn't easy it requires you to rent expensive sound equipment find someone to mind the iPod possibly buy insurance and somehow get around or ignore the technical issues like the inevitable three second delay between songs you get on an iPod. And yet some people find that preferable to risking the agadu or chicken dance scenario on their big day. An iPod might well be better than a bad DJ. But the DJ is a key part of your five hour reception and some of them are very good indeed. When she was good, she was very very good. Perhaps it's hard for the average bride and groom to grasp the difference between a green DJ with low-end equipment and a seasoned one who knows how to transform shy and retiring Clark Kent's into dance floor superheroes. The first of maybe nothing more than a glorified CD changer. He may or may not have a firm grasp of the different musical needs that accompany standard reception rituals like the cake cutting or the father-daughter dance. He may lug in his entry-level PV subwoofers and arrange his sound system in ways that ignore your venue's peculiarities. The second of may have emceed one hundreds of weddings. Along the way he's developed something subtle but important known as voice and personality not an imitation of some radio hosts but his own. He doesn't practice on your wedding he brings his skills to it, along with a top-of-the-line sound system which he'll arrange differently depending on factors like whether or not your venue is broken up into several chambers the cocktail lounge and the banquet area for example if he's a gearhead he might even offer specialty lighting abilities you might not think of such as the ability to shine GoBoss on the dance floor GoBoss being customized templates that display things like your wedding monogram. Some DJs even offer giant video screens and live replays of key points in the reception. But the most important skills a good DJ will bring to your wedding is a honed personality, a formal friendly image and an absolute mastery of what gets crowds on their feet. Okay so you get it. You understand that not all DJs are alike and that a good one brings as much your wedding as any premium florist or baker. So how do you find him? Choose DJs that take their job seriously skip the part-timers they're still learning the ropes and they'll be practicing on your wedding. Instead, look for full-timers who show their commitment to the profession by belonging to professional DJ associations such as CPDJA, ADJA, and NAME, or NADJ in the UK. Paul adds ask if they have public liability insurance in case grandma trips over a speaker wire and pat electrical test certificates to ensure their equipment is safe. This also shows they're professionals and not cutting corners. Meet with them in person and take a gander at their sound systems. 
You might not know your Geminis or PVs from your Mackies or QSCs, but even a casual glance should tell you whether the DJ or company invests in good equipment. In fact, most will be delighted to run you through their top of the line systems if you give them the slightest excuse. While you're there, take a look at their promotional photos and videos. Are they wearing tuxes? Do they look sharp? Does their sound stage sport garish self promoting signs or do they keep things discreet? Turn on your X ray vision. Everyone has what it takes to pick a great DJ. You simply have to meet with them in person and absorb what they have to offer. Paul says, talk to them their personality should shine through. While you're there ask them what special qualities they can bring to their wedding. Ask how they're prepared to work with you to make your day extraordinary. The DJ should be happy to meet you seem interested in the specifics of your venue and ask questions. Any DJ who seems phased or reluctant by any of this they're not the one. If your DJ seems bored or gives you the sense you'll be just another date on their calendar they're also not the one. A coda for the couple. It's true with the cake, it's true with the steak tartar and it's true for your DJ the final word is quality not price. The DJ should be happy to meet you seem interested in the specifics of your venue and ask questions. Any DJ who seems phased or reluctant by any of this they're not the one. If your DJ seems bored or gives you the sense you'll be just another date on their calendar they're also not the one. A coda for the couple. It's true with the cake, it's true with the steak tartar and it's true for your DJ the final word is quality not price. As Paul puts it, when you look back on your wedding reception in years to come do you want to remember what a fantastic time everyone had? Or do you want to say, well at least we saved some money on the DJ? Good DJs see themselves as part of the larger picture. They expect to work closely with your coordinator, photographer and videographer and to custom fit their setup to your venue. So hire a good DJ one who can help you tailor the night's entertainment to your individual wedding. And see what they can offer to make your wedding function unique, adds Paul. What's different in Indian fashion? Indian fashion has a greedy new customer these days. The Indian metrosexual. In other words the young men who are dressing to impress look good and get a cut above the rest. Gone are the days when the only men who dressed to kill were film stars and models. With a range of outfits that suit all styles, occasions and budgets now being available all over Indian men are suddenly looking hotter. Rohit Chavda a 26-year-old advertising executive now has a wardrobe that he says he loves to show off. Rohit's wardrobe consists of a range of outfits right from formal business suits to sports jackets and pullovers and also several traditional outfits like Akans, Jodhpuras, Shawanis and Churidar Kurtas apart from his regular jeans, t-shirts and cotton trousers. I feel like a business tycoon when I wear a business suit to an important meeting instead of the regular run of the mill shirt and trouser. I feel more confident when I'm dressed well and my clients take me more seriously. And the best part of it is that clothes now longer cost a bomb. I can walk into a store and buy a stylish suit of the rack and not have to pay through my nose. What about traditional Indian clothing? Rohit answers, when I wear a Sherwani to a wedding, I can see the girls secretly eyeing me. They think of me as the new age Indian man who is modern but takes pride in being traditional. Many other young men like Rohit enjoy dressing in traditional Indian clothes. Jodhpuras. Akans, Sheruanas, Churidar Kurtas etc. are now being introduced by leading fashion designers and fashion houses. They are tailored using rich fabrics and are embroidered heavily, making the wearer look elegant classy and stylish. More and more Indian men are now looking forward to festivals weddings and traditional ceremonies. It's giving them a chance to dress up and enjoy as much as much as their female counterparts. Don't leave before you press like button below and subscribe to this channel. As a subscriber you will receive a new notifications every time a new video is uploaded. Good luck.